Hello students, I am Dr. Tanmay Vishash and I welcome you all in my channel Tanmay Care. Today's topic of discussion is one MCQ when the question is in front of you. I request you please pause the video, try by yourself and whatever answer you get, please write in the comment box along with few words as explanation. I believe you have tried, so let's start. Now question, what is the major product of this reaction? Here, this molecule has student a name that is barbituric acid. And if you react with this iron sulfate hydrogen peroxide, it is actually student in combination, it is an oxidizing reagent. So it produces some product. Okay. Now question, what is the structure of the product? Four options are provided. Before going to details, let's learn a little bit about this iron sulfate hydrogen peroxide, which is known as Fenton reagent. So this Fenton reagent is a solution of hydrogen peroxide with ferrous ion, I mean iron 2 ion. Typically, in this case, actually, iron sulfate 7 water is used. Now, why? Because generally, iron in plus 2 oxidation state not that much stable. It's a catalyst used to oxidize. Contaminant or waste water is a part of advanced oxidation process. It's a powerful oxidizing agent. So, why it is powerful? First, you should know about this hydrogen peroxide molecule. By the way, student, hydrogen peroxide is a very reactive molecule. Why? Because this adjacent lone pair repels each other, which makes this molecule little less stable. And here, oxygens are peroxy oxygen, means oxidation state is minus 1. We know that oxygens are more stable in minus 2 oxidation state. So what it does? It accepts electron and gets reduced. And from where it accepts electron? Obviously, iron 2. Because we know this iron 2 plus releases one electron and itself got oxidized to iron 3 plus. And in this process, whatever electron release that reduces this break this bond and reduces one of the, actually if you break this bond homolytically, I mean if you symmetrically break the covalent bond, so you can expect this is half electron movement, fish hook arrow. So you can expect if one electron you provide, so one hydroxyl radical will be considered so hydroxyl anion and another will remain as it is OH radical. Remember, these OH radicals are called ROS or reactive oxygen species. They are very powerful oxidizing agent. Why? Because if you look at this is OH dot oxygen radical. Here the central oxygen is carrying 7 electron. Means octet is not filled. Second thing, oxygen is a very electronegative element which carrying 7 electron efficiency. That's why it is not a stable. Consequently, what it does, it prefers to have one extra more electron, means it want to get eight electron configuration. For that purpose, it try to snatch electron from someone else. In chemical term, it oxidizes someone else and itself got reduced to hydroxyl. Agree. Now here, what is the consequence? Here, okay, first time hydroxyl radical and hydroxyl anion. In second phase, whatever iron 3 plus produce, that further reacts with hydrogen peroxide. Now, in this way, you can understand that hydrogen peroxide releases one proton and produces this hydroperoxide anion plus H plus. I am just giving you a suggestion such that you can remember the thing easily. So, the H plus is written as it is. Now, iron 3 plus. What it does? It takes one electron from this hydrogen peroxide and produces hydroperoxide radical. Why? Because as I told, this lone pair, lone pair repulsion is significantly higher in this molecule. And if you remove one proton, so another one lone pair, so electron density is pretty high at this position. Consequently, one electron is taken from this oxygen and produces these hydroperoxide radicals. Now, hydroperoxide radical again negative charge is on oxygen. So, this is also less stable. This is also a kind of ROS. So, okay, two ROS are generated. So, if you combine these two reactions, you can see just add these two reactions. So, this side Fe3 plus, this side Fe3 plus will go and ultimately this side Fe2 plus, Fe2 plus go. So, two molecules of hydrogen peroxide decomposed into one molecule of HO dot means hydroxyl radical, one molecule of peroxide radical and this HO minus plus this H plus combines together produces this water. Actually, this iron 2 plus is needed in catalytic amounts, it's written. So, first step, iron 2 plus consumed to iron 3 plus. Second step, iron 2 plus is regenerated. So, catalytic amount of iron is enough. Now, these ROS, I mean HO minus dot or HO dot 
can oxidize i mean this hydrogen is replaced to phenol now you can ask sir okay i understand that there is oh dot so phenol but if i consider ho dot then instead of phenol i can expect this peroxy derivative yes obviously you can expect that remember student the reason what i explained for the unstability of peroxide still exist here so adjacent lone pair lone pair repulsion so it will also not be stable so it will again broken down and ultimately converted into phenol fine this is one example another example if you take lactic acid or alpha hydroxy propionic acid so what it does in presence of this what happened these alpha position this oh oxidizes to corresponding carbonic and now look at the system it is in conjugation so in this way lactic acid is converted into pyruvic acid by the oxidation using fenton's reagent now let's go back to our example so if you look at you may consider sir this is also the alpha position with respect to the carbonyl here it is not acid it is amines now what can happen so iron sulfate hydrogen peroxide so ro is there so you can expect okay sir there is a hydroxyl radical so this is actually the ultimately oxidizing agent so it will oxidize and produce so by the way here the electron movement you can indicate by such kind of half arrow which is also known as fish hook arrow fish hook arrow means it's a setup to catch fish now so one electron will come here so here one product will be water another is this radical now radicals are not significantly stable so again another molecule of ho dot can combine here to produce this alpha hydroxy amine so like the previous way similarly again it will be oxidized ultimately to produce this carbonyl by the way one confusion may generate in your mind that sir there is one lone pair here on this nitrogen or in each bond is there why doesn't it react in order to answer this question i would say student remember if you remove one electron from nitrogen and produce a nitrogen based radical it is far more unstable compared to carbon based radical because radical means actually there are seven electron species so deficiency in electron means not octet field now nitrogen is more electronegative compared to carbon so nitrogen cannot handle or withstand this deficiency more efficiently compared to carbon so that's why i will not say both are reactive radical means reactive but carbon is relatively lesser reactive compared to nitrogen so that's why reaction will not happen so furthermore and this lone pair is also in delocalization with this carbonyl as well as this carbonyl so it's not that much available too so lone pair generation of nitrogen atom is not stable so the, that much that's why in h bond or oxidation on this nitrogen will not take place second thing it is a iron sulfate hydrogen peroxide and previously i have shown that water is generated so in reaction medium there is water this water molecule what it does actually if you look at this is actually a one two three tricarbonyl remember such kind of molecules are actually very reactive and they are very prone to gem diol formation from carbonyl to gem diol i've already discussed few lectures related to this in my visit and these target tricarbonyl are not that much stable so you can expect sir this carbon delta plus this is delta minus so this is also delta plus this is also delta plus this carbon i'm talking now so it is stable obviously now that's why what happened this water molecule can act as a nucleophile so water addition along this carbon oxygen bond takes place and ultimately it produces a gem diol so you can expect sir there is one hydroxyl here this is one so this is one carbonyl this is one carbonyl this is and by the way two nh are there obviously so here and is there any stability because generally we have observed that this gem diol part prefers to remain towards the carbonyl side means it's a equilibrium equilibration reaction but in this case this equilibrium prefer to go to product side means gem diol side why because the product has intramolecular hydrogen bonding so these hydrogen bonding helps to stabilize this by the way this is the additional information not directly related to here so this part we understand that oxidation happens and produces these one two three tricarbonyl derivative where the alpha carbon got oxidized to carbonyl too so here what is the product obviously this one now just imagine if you don't know the ex exact information how can you come up to the right answer using your guess Student, I can make your life easier by giving you a 50-50 
elimination process. So this is called as process of elimination. Very helpful in solving MCQ. This process. What is what do I mean? So iron two sulfate hydrogen peroxide. It is actually an oxidizing medium. So if the medium is oxidizing in nature, then it will result in oxidation. It cannot do reduction. Look at here. So here it means that carbonyl group got reduced. No, no, no. It's an illogical choice. Look at here. Here also carbonyl group got reduced. Not possible. So look at this option C and option D. They are actually completely illogical options. So if you are little alert in the exam hall, you can very quickly find out. So eliminate this. Now using your knowledge, you can guess. Remember, anoxides are not that much stable. They are also very reactive. I have already discussed a dedicated lecture on pyridine anoxide. You may visit. So these are very reactive. These are also strong oxidizing agent. So reaction will prefer to follow a pathway where you can get a relatively more stable product and you can say sir one two three tricarbonyl is not that much stable because of this adjacent delta positive electrophilic carbon center i have just explained how does they achieve their stability so that issue is also not here also so from here you can understand this is the right answer okay so this is the overall discussion i believe this video may be useful thanks for watching see you in my next video bye, -bye.